Um, why do you think you're only the second footballer to come out? Um, I mainly think it's it's the atmosphere of, of football, of the locker room and in the stadiums. Uh, it's it's growing up, or at least for me, it was growing up as a footballer and hearing things in locker rooms that really scarred me and made me believe that it wasn't possible. What homophobic comments? Yeah, homophobic comments. Yeah. Um, was this because they were directed at you, or it was no. just general talk? Yeah, general talk. Uh, general talk, for example, um, like how someone could even be gay. Like that would be a discussion in a football you know, locker room. How did you feel when you heard that? Um, I mean, I would just, I mean, I felt awful. I mean, <laughs> of course, but I would avoid the conversation. I would go, uh, go more into myself and, you know, repress that kind of stuff. So uh, it got to a point when I was 24, 25, that I was like, all right, I, I, I can't live this way. And you came out yeah. just after you announced your retirement yeah, at the same yeah. sort of time. Yeah, I mean, I, I came out to my family in October, November, and just made a plan to how I was going to come out and, and stop football. And I didn't really know what the reaction would be. You know, I didn't. Uh, what was the reaction? Uh, I mean, very, very supportive, which was the exact opposite that I thought would happen. And my family, from the first second I told them, was very supportive. And, and uh, you know, that's, you know, in the end, kind of why I went back to football. You worry about how the fans would have taken it if you were still playing? In, in England, yeah. yeah. Um, that's a great question. You know, no one's done it. So yes. that, was, that was my fear is uh, I had no one to look up to to kind of to test those waters for me before, you know, I went out there. Um, I mean, I did it back in the U.S. because there's not as big of a spotlight, you know, in football. Uh, my family's in L.A., so if uh, I was, you know, really struggling, I could always just go home. <laughs> um, but I mean, eventually someone will do it and footballers will do it and, and that will be interesting to see. By the law of averages, there must be lots of gay men playing football. Do you ever come uh, across them? No, <laughs> I haven't come across, I haven't received you know, a letter or a text or anything from, from one footballer that wanted to talk about those kind of issues. You know, I've received phone calls and I've spoken with all my friends here in the UK and around the world that have supported me, but I haven't had uh, one message from a footballer. What do you deduce from that? I just, it reminds me of the fear that I had and, and it's like a, like sometimes you forget when you're on the other side, but uh, you remember, you know, that atmosphere and, and how it made you feel. Because by the law of averages, there yeah. are lots of gay footballers. Yeah, I know. But just, that's, that just shows what the problem, that there's a huge problem, you know, and what do you do to change that is you try to support them to create an environment that is, uh, uh, that would support them to come out and that they would feel comfortable in, but it's really tough. Stuff. Do you, in any sense, wish you had done it while you were still an active player? Um, well, I mean, I'm an active player now. You are now, but at the yeah, time you the said UK. I'm quitting. And yeah, yeah. No, I'm happy the way I did it. You know, I got to step away and kind of take some time to myself. I didn't have people dragging me to do interviews or do anything like that. And uh, I was in total control. I could say whatever I wanted to say. Yeah, but clearly you feel now you've got some sort of duty. Yeah, no, I do. I, yeah, I, I mean... I know and I realize that I'm the only one that's doing this. So, um, you know, after months of kind of taking some time myself and receiving letters from people, I realized that I was being a coward by, by not going back to football and, and, and I missed it. And it was something that I've done my whole life. So um, I did feel, you know, a responsibility. And what was it like when you discovered that your anxiety about how yeah. people would react had been yeah. misplaced? Yeah. Um, I mean, there's two sides of it. You know, sometimes people say, do you think footballers make a bigger deal out of it than it is, or athletes? And I say, no, definitely not. I mean, there's obviously things that, he that's the reason why they're not coming out, because they hear so many things that scare them. But um, my mom said to me, you know, I think, I like, have you learned that you should give people a chance as well? You know, give people a chance to get to know you and, and, and to see that, uh, you know, yes, you're football, you're gay, but there's, you know, more sides to you. So I did learn that lesson from this, that, you know, to be open with people and to give people a chance. Were your parents surprised? Um, yes and no. They say sometimes they were, and then, like, yeah, but then you dated a girl, so you threw us off. I was like, okay. <laughs> I was like, all right. Um, so that's what I've heard from everybody. Uh, I guess I was a good actor. <laughs> Do you think it's harder to come out if you're playing in a team sport as opposed to an individual sport? Um, I mean, I've, I haven't played any individual sports, so I can speak from, from my experience, and, and my biggest fear was going back into a locker room and, and the thought of being treated as an outcast, I just, that was the one thing I didn't want to do. So playing in a team sport, you know, obviously you're dealing with all those personalities, you, people from all around the world. That do you, um, 
Is it, is it, I mean, is it to do with being naked in the locker room together, no. or it's not no. that? No, no, no. It's, it's, it's just it's sitting there the with all the guys. Yeah, it's it. sitting there with all the guys and the banter and talking and and uh, trying to fit in and and all that stuff. That's you know, it's your team. It's your brothers. You fight every weekend to to win a game together and. Um, you know, to be outcasted from a group like that when you're there every day is awful. So, you know, I felt inside that way, but you know, I wasn't treated. That no one knew I was gay. No one, you know, accused me or you know pointed a finger at me. But um, you know, they didn't know. You know, do you uh, think it was an unfounded fear? Um, no, because it was the things that I heard my whole life mm. that scared me. You know, I'm from a very conservative Catholic family in, in California, and I've been playing football my whole life, and. The amount of things that I've heard in, in stadiums and in locker rooms just made me think that there's no way I can come out and play soccer. But they're not talking about you. I know, but they're still talking about, you know, people. They're talking about people in the streets. They're talking about uh, how could you even be a gay man? How could you fall in love with a man? So I'm hearing these conversations and I'm riding the bike. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, I know this is not an atmosphere for me. But yeah. it wasn't, you know, in retrospect, it wasn't something you really needed to fear. No, I guess I guess if I maybe would have you know come out and, and been like, well, actually wait, I think you know it would have been a bit awkward. But then maybe after a few days or a week, it, they would have gotten over it. So that's why I'm hoping that other athletes would do it. <laughs> well, good luck to you. Thanks. Thank you so much.